Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are in week uh, 1 and module 2. So, in the last uh, module, we have uh, understood the basic uh, you know, importance of C++ programming, particularly the modern aspects and we learnt about the course overall. In this module, we would like to start by highlighting the differences between C and C++ programs to make you understand the ease of programming in C++. Right. So, when we discuss that, please, uh, um, uh, you know, please keep in mind that this is not related to compatibility of these two languages. That will be covered in a separate tutorial. Here, what we are going to do is, you write, we will take programs in C and write their appropriate C++ equivalent and try to show you how it becomes easier to write more efficient, uh, safer, you know, less error prone code in C++. So, there are several, uh, you know, six different examples, very common programs, which I am sure in C, you must have written all of them, or at least most of them. So, I will use them to provide a comparison with the corresponding um, C++ program. So, the entire story as the world starts with the hello world, which is the basic handling of the IO. So, this is the hello world uh, program, which uh, all of you know. So, you have to include stdio.h in C, you know that and you do a printf with a new line, right. That is a, a hello world in C. In C++, instead you use a different uh, header called IO stream and note that uh, in IO stream there is no h dot h. We will talk about this more. And you use the same uh, string or a similar string to do the hello world, but you use an output streaming operator this is called and stream to std out, std colon colon c out, which is actually the standard output. And then you put a inline marker, which gives you exactly similar output as in here, right. Okay. So, having said that, now if you compare, what you see is IO header is different, right. You are using printf to print to console, which is std out and here you are using an operator, operator less than less than called output streaming to stream to the console. You know, the, the terms are also kind of changing. It is not only about syntax, but in typically C you say that I print, in C++ you say I stream. The console is the std out file. Here it is std colon colon c out o stream. O stands for output and that is in the standard namespace. We will talk about it, what it means. Printf is a variadic function in the sense that it takes any number of uh, arguments after a format string. The format string is important, uh, is mandatory at the beginning and then you can have any number of them as you, as you know. But uh, this operator is just binary. It just takes uh, a one, uh, it takes the stream and what you want to print and does the printing, does the streaming and then returns the same stream, right. We will learn more. Backslash n is used for going to new line. Here it is std colon colon endl in the std namespace, end line in the namespace. Where, where backslash n is an escape new character, std colon colon endl is a stream manipulator. So, we will see that besides putting a new line, it can actually do more stuff and it is a functor, we will talk about this. I am just trying to show you the, the parallel between these two. Okay? So, let us go to the next uh, uh, example, which is adding two numbers and handling the I O again. Okay. So, 
we want to add two numbers, read them from the input, add two numbers and write their sum. A simple program which you must have written n number of times in uh, terms of c. So, let us see what is, what are the things that are same, what are the things that are different. Naturally, the input output library is different, we have already observed that. Now, here you print, you declare a b, here also you declare a b, these are what you want to read. So, you put a message to the user asking to input the numbers, here you do the same, but it differs in, in scanf as it differed in printf. In scanf, you present, it is a, a variadic function again, so you present a format and then you put all the different inputs that you want, right, input variables. And the key thing is, while you put this, you do not put it as the name of the variable, you put it as the address of the variable, right, you put an ampersand, you know that that is required to be able to read from the input. Whereas, in C++, you use the input streaming operator, which is coming in from the std colon colon c in, which is the standard in input console into the variable. And the variable is not written as with the address, it is just written without anything, it is just written as a simple variable, right. So, you know syntactically it makes it much easier to deal with it. Then you make the sum of them, you do the sum of them here as well. The only difference I show that uh, the sum variable needed to be declared before and this is what you read in Carning and Rich's book that all variables must be declared before the first executable statement of the function. Right? So, it was declared before, but here what I have done is I have declared it in the middle. This is what uh, C++ allows from the very beginning. In fact, uh, C also allows it from C89. So, but I have shown it uh, a comparison. So, this this basically uh, you can you can note that this basically is written for K and R C, where it was not allowed to put uh, the variable declaration in the middle of a function. But I just wanted to show you that. Now, this is also used uh, allowed in C, but C++ will often have that. Rest of it is uh, printf and the std colon colon c out, which we have already seen in the earlier example. So, if I uh, go back to the comparison proper, uh, then these are the things that you must note that you are using scanf in uh, c to read from the console, you are using input streaming operator to read from the input stream the console in the c++. Console is std in here the console is std colon colon c in, which is a i stream, i stands for input, is a std namespace. Scanf is a variadic function like printf, whereas operator input streaming is a binary operator. This comparison is similar to the print. This is very critical. In C, you need to take addresses of variables that you want to read in C++, you do not need to do that, you direct, directly use the variables. This uh, difference I have already mentioned, all variables need to be declared first, this is a K and R C, whereas sum can be declared whenever it was actually needed and the same thing is allowed in from C 89 as well. Then you need formatting percentage D for uh, variables, whereas no specific formatting is required. In terms of, uh, for example, here you are using formatting of percentage D to say that you read A, you read B or you scan A, you scan B as an in integer. Similarly, here in printf you are doing this, you say that you print A as an integer, here you do not need to say any of that, you just write this. So, that makes life lot more simple. So, it is kind of the kind of way you want the uh, input uh, or the output, you just keep on writing that uh, with the repeated uh, streaming operators and this will serve your 
purpose. What happens in C++ is uh, since you have already declared a and b as int or sum as int, while you try to stream it to the output or while you are trying to stream it from the input, the compiler knows that it is an integer. So, it knows what is the corresponding formatting that needs to be specified. This is, this is possible because you have these operators and it was not possible because these were functions which were very adequate, which had no way of knowing what your parameters and what the types of those parameters are because it is very adequate. There is no, there is no signature which says this is their, this is their type of the parameters it is getting. So, it knows that it will get a constant string at the beginning which is a format after that it can get, you can put as many variables as possible of any type whatsoever. So, printf scanf cannot have this smartness of knowing the or deciding the format based on the type of the variable which C++ uh, streaming operators make heavy use of which makes programming far more easier in this language. So, let us uh, move to the next uh, example which is finding the square root, right, which is again a very simple, these are all very simple programs. So, besides uh, the input output for finding square root, you need to include math.h, right, the mathematical library in the C standard library. Equivalently in uh, C++, you include C math. So, we will discuss this more, but this is just to show you that uh, anything that you have in C standard library, you can use it, use that library function in C++ by including the library as C followed by the library name. C is C meaning that this is a C library and not having the dot h. So, math dot h becomes C math, stdio dot h becomes C stdio and so on. Okay. Then what you are doing in C++ is you are saying that any thing that I do with the library will be in the standard namespace. We will talk about what namespace is, but just think of now that it is a way to define the symbols with std colon colon. So, earlier we were writing, we were writing std colon colon c out, saying that std the c out symbol which is the output uh, stream O stream is defined in the std namespace. Now, we have said, we have said that we are using std namespace. So, we are I am just writing c out. So, by default the compiler looks in the std namespace and checks is there a c out, it finds one and uses that. So, this actually means this, okay. but it eases a lot of uh, you know typing of the code. For example, I am just writing endl, but it actually means std colon colon endl. I am just writing c in, it actually means std colon colon c in, right. So, that is the advantage of uh, having the using part of it, okay. So, so then what we have, we have the print, uh, I am sorry. Uh, we have the print message, see out this we have seen, scan to read the input and then you do square root for this. Again, here I have defined it in the KNR style, I can define it, uh, declares sqrt underscore x right here as well. So, sqrt underscore x has a value of the square root of x. Then I print x, I print sqrt x. Similarly, I do in. So it is, it is. Rest of it is all, all very similar. And uh, since it is a double, I am using a formatting which is for double. Here again, as I said, that for this or for this, uh, I do not need to use any formatting because it knows the compiler knows from the type itself. 
So, here are the main differences. Here math library is math dot h, here it is C math, C standard library in C plus plus, percentage H uh, L F for formatting, here it is not required. Square root is a C standard library function which C plus plus can use. So, you can whole of the C standard library can be used in this way. Of course, you see that there is a difference in the precision of printing here you can see that in C you are printing uh, up to 4 up to 6 decimal points that is precision is 6 where here you are printing 5. Uh, this is uh, for the default setting of the compiler that is doing C as well as that is doing C plus plus. Later on we will show how to control this you can decide as to in C you know how to do that the uh, size dot precision kind of uh, qualifier with the um, uh, format string. In C plus plus also we will show how to control the uh, precision as to what you want, but I just wanted to highlight that by default in uh, GCC. Uh, C follows percentage LF follows one precision and C out for double follows a different precision. Right? So, this is just a um, gives you an idea of how to use the C um, standard library in C plus plus as well. Now, having said that, so let us take a quick look as to how do how does a C standard library work in C++ right? and uh, what is the role that the std namespace play there. So, what I have is a C standard library where all names are global as you know in C everything all functions are global. So, it has global a whole collection of global functions and some global symbols like std out, std in these are of course, global functions. Now, C stand C plus plus standard library all names are with within std namespace standard namespace. So, your C out is std colon colon is of same this and the way to do this is doing using. So, that you do not have to. So, this is a this is a comparison of code where you are using using the namespace std. So, you write less here you are not using. So, you write more it is a syntactic difference nothing else. Okay. So, this is the basic uh, of the libraries. Now, uh, how to include the headers right? that is the most important thing. So, there are kind of four possible I mean kind of three possibilities that you are writing a C program or you are writing a C plus plus program is the first choice. You want to use a C header, C library standard library header or C plus plus standard library header. Right? So, how do you write the header in every case. Now, writing a C program using C standard library header is known to you, you do an include of the library dot h stdio dot h, stdlib dot h, math dot h and so on and so forth. You have been using it. So, you are already familiar. This is not possible that you are you writing a C program and using a C plus plus header that is not possible. So, that is ruled out. Now, in C plus plus if you want to use a header then you use no dot h you will just write I O stream, you will just write uh, vector, you will just write stack, you will just write algorithm. So, these are the different components of the C plus plus standard library and you do the same hash include, but no h dot h. If you are using a C standard library component, then the change that you have to make is put a C before the library name and not use a h again dot h again and the names will be in std namespace. So, it becomes c stdio right you have same this. So, when you have c standard library header used in c plus plus. So, we wrote c math and in c it was math dot h 
and it is in C plus plus it is actually S T D colon colon S Q R T, not just S Q R T. Why? Because C math is a C plus plus library now, and it is in the namespace is put in the namespace of S T D. So every symbol in math dot h which has become now C math are available not in the global namespace, but in the namespace of std only. So, you have to use it with that. Now, if you happen to use a C standard library component in C++, not with the C++ uh, style, but just as math dot h, you are, I mean you are perfectly okay to do that. It is not preferred, it is not preferred, but it is not wrong. So, you can do that, but if you do that, then the name is still the name from math.h is still in the global namespace. So, you will not use std colon colon sqrt, you will just use it as sqrt, right. But what I will strongly suggest is do not do this. Finally, uh, what if you include a C header as with a dot h, I O stream dot h. Okay. Now, this is which is something which is disastrous, because the good part would be that in many of uh, systems this will give you an error saying that I O stream dot h does not exist, then you got saved. But in some old systems particularly, it, a I O stream dot h file may also exist and if it does, then it is some old wrong stuff. This C plus plus standard library with dot h extension used to be there much earlier. These are now deprecated and completely out of use. So, it may be very dangerous if you happen to use them and if your system or your compiler is old enough so that it still has some copies of I O stream dot h or say vector dot h and so on. Right? So, always remember that if you are using when you are using C plus plus standard library never use dot h. Okay. So, So, I move on to the last uh, uh, example or no sorry there are one more. So, the next example which is doing the addition of n numbers which is something very very common that you have done often. I have the input libraries namespace declarations uh, here. I read the number of numbers and then I say that I will basically do an addition of integers from the from 0 up to that number. Right? So, that is what I am doing here, that is what I am doing here and then I will print which is this is a very straightforward simple program. The feature that I want to highlight is if you are writing it in C, you can write you will have to declare int i here or if you are doing knr or you can declare it somewhere here int i if you are using c89 or later. But in C++ you have to use you may use not have to you can use it uh, as, as well here, but you may use it right inside the loop. If you use it right inside the loop, it is just a local declaration here, which is often very useful because wherever you need locally, you can just within that control construct, you can declare and use it and outside of that, it is not defined. So, it can be reused that same name can be used. You may note that uh, from C 99 onwards, this has also been included this feature has also been included in the C language. So, if you 
if you are on k and r c which is very unlikely you will have to write it here. If you are on c 89 not on c 99 onwards then you have to use it here. If you are c 99 onwards then you can use it in any one of the places right. So, this is some of the basic uh, nuances that you have. Now, let us uh, let me move to the last example which is regarding boolean. Now, boolean as we all know is an important uh, feature of the language. We always need to make choices true or false and we need a boolean value. So, in, in traditional uh, C say K and R C what will be boolean? So, typically you will uh, you can have boolean as a manifest constant true defined as 1 and another false defined as 0. You can put say x is assigned true and then if you print it will print it as 1. Okay. So, using int and hash define you can create a bool kind of variable in k and r c which is only possible way. So, otherwise you are, you, I mean basically you are maintaining it as an integer only, but you are just uh, you know interpreting it as a boolean. If it is 0 you say it is false, if it is not 0 you say it is true. Now, when we move to C 89 things improved. So, C 89 provided a new header known as stdbool.h. This header is provided specifically to support boolean value as bool. You want to call it bool as if it is a different thing. So, it includes bool and it actually is uh, the actually the defined type is underscore bool, but there is a macro which defines bool to underscore bool. There are macros which define true as 1, false as 0. Mind you these are predefined in stdbool.h and these are all in lower case. So, with that you can write this. Mind you this is defined in that stdbool.h header. So, if it is not included this code may give an error, but some other C standard library components also in turn include stdbool.h. So, it is possible that if you are including stdlib.h you may not need to include this, but I have specifically shown it here. So, that uh, you can have these macros available and this this there is also a macro to check that whether you have done it, which give you a sense of a true boolean type. In C++, it goes uh, further, it is not macros which are defining it, it has been supported as a built in type like you have integer like you have double you have a bool type. And like 1 0 2 3 4 17 all of these are literals of int type, bool type has two literals true and false. So, they are not mappings to 1 or 0, they are just literals by themselves and uh, C++ does that. So, code wise it looks uh, same and certainly you do not need to include anything special because it is no more a feature of the library, it is a feature of the language. So, in the leftmost in KRC there was no support in the language nor in the library. So, you are creating and interpreting your bool in your own way. In the second column you are in C 99 onwards, C 89 onwards, where you have a library support to give you a feeling of a boolean bool. And rightmost column in C++, you now have bool as a built in type with true and false being actual literal. So, it is now a language support, no more a library support. Right? So, that is uh, that is kind of the development that has uh, happened. And uh, that gives us a very easy way of uh, using bool in 
C++. So to summarize, uh, we ha I have tried to highlight a few differences between C and C++, which are fun of fundamental nature, particularly in terms of I/O input and output, variable declaration, and the use of standard library, which are the commonest things you start doing in starting to program. And we have seen that uh, C++ gives us uh, better flexibility in terms of declarations and input output and makes it simpler to deal with. And uh, many C constructs and functions get simplified in C++, which help to increase the readability as well as the ease of programming. So, with these words, uh, I will conclude on this uh, module 2 and uh, I hope uh, these examples and variants of them, you will not only study in the module, but you will start practicing them on the system that you have installed the GCC both in uh, C as well as in uh, C++ versions and actually check for yourself what you are getting and then you make modifications to understand that how elementary C++ programs can be created corresponding to the C versions. Thank you all very much. See you again next module.